Hello, it's my pleasure to join you today to bring you information about Edmonton's Food Bank and hunger in our community. My name is Marjorie Benz. I'm Executive Director of Edmonton's Food Bank. The Edmonton Food Bank was formed in 1981 as the Edmonton Gleaners Association. To glean means to gather by patient harvest. And the original founders of Edmonton's Food Bank saw two needs in the community they felt they wanted to address. One was that there was surplus food that was potentially going to waste in the food industry, leftover breads and pastries at grocery stores, food from farmers and other food industry partners. The idea of gleaning is not a new one. For example, in biblical times, wealthy landlords were invited to leave the remnants in their field so that others could harvest the surplus grains or fruits and serve those who were less fortunate. While the Edmonton Gleaners Association name is not a common name that we use as an organization anymore, it's certainly a fun fundamental and foundational piece of our work. Our organization has two key elements in its mission statement. One, of course, is the stewardship of donated and surplus food. The second one, of course, is also working with the community to engage and seek solutions to the causes of hunger. We have a number of programs that we offer in the, in the city, and I want to share a couple of areas that sometimes aren't really well known to the community. One is that we are a central warehouse and distribution point that provides food to over 250 agencies, churches, and food depots. And those groups are serving those people who are disadvantaged in our community. We know that Edmonton is large and spread out, so we know that service provision needs to happen in all parts and all elements of our community. We're probably best known for a hamper programs. A hamper is a box of food that an individual or family takes home with them and enjoys in their own home. And in 2019, more than 62,000 different people received a hamper from Edmonton's Food Bank or one of our affiliates. At the time of this recording, I don't have the numbers for 2019. Um, and but we will have information on our website in the next couple of weeks. One of the areas that we do as an organization is distribute food to to um, organizations like Hope Mission, Mustard Seed, different school programs. The gentleman in this picture is Mark Turner from Hope Mission and Hope Mission picks up food two to three times a day again because they're serving large populations of people in need and so our role is to provide the food and they do the direct, direct distribution. We have two warehouses on 120th Street that we work out of. These warehouses have walk-in freezers and coolers to keep products safe, as well as we also have a third warehouse that we lease that's helping us out this year because of the pandemic and our need to make sure that we have lots of physical distancing in our buildings for the safety of our clients and our volunteers and our staff. And our work is about food. Last year, we brought in and redistributed about 10 million pounds of food or about $27 million worth of product. And this is the product that's coming from all sources in our community. I spoke earlier about our gleaning efforts and still uh, as an organization, 60 to 80% of our food is gleaned from the food industry. It's food that we've salvaged from a variety of sources. Um, we pick up from, for example, from over 200 suppliers each week uh, food, and we have a, a small fleet of approximately 15 vehicles to help us do those pickups. We, um, um, as an organization, have seen changes because of the pandemic as well. We usually rely heavily on special events to raise food for us. But during the pandemic, other players have stepped forward and helped us out. So for example, when restaurants closed because of pandemic restrictions, they turned to the food bank and offered us their fresh 
fruits and vegetables, the, even the meats that they had frozen because they didn't know when they would reopen. So that really helped our gleaning operations and we were able to provide that food back to our soup kitchens and shelters and people in need. Most often people hear about our special events and food drives and in 2019 we had over 2,000 events to raise food and funds for the food bank. And again, we rely on the community for our food and funds in order that we can do the work in the community. There's no mistake that the dynamics certainly changed in 2020 because of the pandemic and we were no longer to have um, events in our community. So for, for example, the Heritage Festival didn't happen this year. So we moved to a, a virtual food drive um, to help us out during the summer. So people have been very creative helping us out um, during this time. But again, in the future, we're hoping that special events and food drives and we'll be part of that community response um, and engagement as well. Outside the context of the pandemic, we also received food from large restaurants and the convention center. It was food that was prepared it was flash frozen at the site and then brought to our warehouse. And again, we turned that over to soup kitchens and shelters and that uh, services were really um, appreciated. And again, after the pandemic, we'll resume some of those work. It's kind of ironic that we were picking up food from the conference center prior to the pandemic. Now we're taking uh, food to the conference center because they're serving those who are homeless in our community. So again, working in partnership and collaboration with community partners. We um, have a program called Plant a Row, Grow a Row, which is encourages people to plant vegetables in their garden that are harvested and donated to the food bank. These uh, garden boxes that you see in this picture are the garden boxes on the south side of our annex that volunteers maintain and we also have a couple of other community groups that uh, also garden in our garden plot so encouraging local gardening is one way of helping people respond to food security Again, outside the context of the pandemic, we would support organizations doing collective kitchens because again, it's a way of encouraging people to cook together, save some time and some money and participate and make really conscious decisions about food security in their homes. And so um, again, we would be um, um, engaging and supporting the community in those ways. And we're looking forward to after the pandemic to resume some of those services. And volunteers are essential to our work. Um, in 2020, just over 75,000 volunteer hours were contributed to the work we do. We weren't able to have the big groups that we usually enjoy helping us out at the food bank. So we were about 25,000 hours less in 2020 than we were in 2019. This particular graph shows the number of average number of hamper recipients per month for each year. Again, 2020 will become information will become available shortly. But I did want to show to you that um, starting in 2016, 2017, when we saw the economy in Alberta change, we also saw changes in the number of people needing our service. And so this was pre pandemic experience. We gather basic information from all our clients and that's how we know how many people are using our hamper programs, how many different people are using our hamper programs. But more information is often required for us to talk to decision makers and inform the community about what's happening in the broader community. We, um, in 2015, as well in, uh, as in 2018, we did in-depth client services surveys to find out more about some of the driving reasons why people were turning to the food bank and how we could help them in different ways as a community. And the, these two complete reports are on our website. Hopefully, if um, we have the capacity in 2021, we'll do another survey that will again inform the community about some of the events that are happening. We, we talked um, to people, found ba basic information about them and what was happening in their lives. One of the changes that we saw from 
2015 to 2018 was a growing number of people over 50 who were unable to secure employment because of changing uh, what was the changes that were happening in our community. Sometimes there's a perception that people who turn to the food bank aren't educated. And as you can see that a lot of our clients have post-secondary education. And there can be multiple reasons why people are unemployed or underemployed in our community. So I think it's really important to point out that education may be a barrier for some people, but not for everybody as well. There's a lot of information in this report about the household income and sources of income for people who turn to the food bank. And again, one of the striking things about this report, it demonstrated that over 70% of our clients were trying their household income, and again, important to stress, their household income was less than 25,000 per year. And we talked to people about what would make a difference. And the vast majority of people said, if their household income would increase by $500 or even less, um, they wouldn't need the food bank or other social supports. These reports, of course, emphasize the importance of some really important areas that we need to work as a community. We need to look at what long-term um, employment looks like. We need to look at what stress and physical uh, well-being looks like and what barriers that creates for people to participate. And of course, we've really seen it emphasized over the last year, the need for affordable uh, housing in our community, and that is a driving force for hunger. The next few slides I'm going to jump through really fast, but um, a really important piece of work that we do in collaboration with other groups, and it, this uh, collaboration which we call also Beyond Food, just like we call our reports Beyond Food, is um, really working with other community groups to see what we can do to help people become more food um, uh, secure and less reliant on food banks and other organizations. And so prior to the pandemic, we were, we were mobilizing and working with other community groups, again, not duplicating services, but helping our clients connect better with resources that may help them become um, less um, dependent on the food bank, um, imp improve their health and well-being, and increase their independence. So we're still doing some of our programming with these partners virtually. Uh, Salvation Army, for example, is a great partner helping us get people get their income tax done, those types of things. We hope again in the future to be able to do some job fairs again, like we were successful with. Um, and again, uh, virtually we're helping people with resume writing and job searches and things like that. And again, we look forward to being able to help people post pandemic when of course, we're hoping that the economy will be a little bit stronger and jobs will open up. And like everywhere else in the world, the pandemic has affected our ability to do our work and created opportunities and eliminated some others, of course. And the federal and provincial governments both helped us in making sure that we could continue to provide food to groups and people in need, and which was new because we usually don't rely on government funding for the work we do. We've been working with other partners. And for example, a great partnership we have with Drive Happiness. We are, have a delivery service to some of the most vulnerable people or people who have to self-isolate. And again, Drive Happiness has been the partner that's made it happen. With the pandemic, we did upgrades to our freezers and coolers to increase our capaci capacity. We also had to uh, work differently with and pivot around our volunteer groups. We worked with Anawim, our largest depot in the inner city. They had to stop doing food distribution because of pandemic restrictions. And we were able to make physical modifications with them so they could resume work. We've also been distributing PPEs with our community groups and um, in our hamper programs. Again, trying to keep people safe and well at this time. 
So there um, is a video we're going to show you shortly, and um, it'll talk about the highlights of the work of the food bank. The video was done before the pandemic, but please be assured, even though there's no masks and PPEs used in this video, uh, we are using them at all times now. Thank you for your time. Keep well, keep safe. Thank you. Edmonton's Food Bank was founded as the Edmonton Gleaners Association in 1981. Here, another busy day begins. We are a central warehouse for over 250 agencies, churches, schools, and food depots who share a common goal of feeding people in need. Agencies such as the Bissell Center and Hope Mission visit regularly to pick up food to then share with people they're caring for. People go hungry in our community every day, but places like the Hope Mission are a refuge. We share food with these shelters and depots feeding those in need. The Edmonton Convention Center, Rogers Place, The Little Potato Company, and Sobeys are among an entire community of corporate partners who stand alongside us providing food. Beyond the aisles and shelves of over 200 grocery stores, food warehouses, and other food industry suppliers lies rescued surplus and edible food. They all play major roles in our work throughout Edmonton. Yearly, Edmonton's Food Bank gathers over 4 million kilograms of donated and rescued food. The food becomes part of the hampers that we prepare for a family or a person in need. Our own cooking show, Cook It Simple, helps educate people on ways to cook items inexpensively and eat healthy. Beyond Food is a collaboration between Edmonton's Food Bank and our volunteers, partner organizations and community agencies where together we're improving food security and quality of life for people who access food bank services by providing job readiness and other non-food help. You can continue helping our work by visiting your local fire hall, grocery store, or any of the hundreds of other businesses in our community with a donation box. Or donate securely online at edmontonsfoodbank.com. Together, we can make a stronger Edmonton free of hunger.